All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, so I hope everybody has already joined our classroom. So just simply go to classroom.google.com and press join a class and enter our code here shown in the screen. All right. So um, um, of course, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Kaori Nieda. So um, I'm a software engineer for Point West Innovations Corporation and a UI UX designer at Livet Technologies. Um, my current full-time work would be a software engineer and my past work was a UI UX designer. So it's a combination of both. So um, what I mostly do would be front-end development. Um, so our topic for today is jump-starting career in UI UX. Um, so for tonight, I would like to share with you uh, my knowledge in UI UX and help you to understand better what it is about. The targets, target audiences for this um, webinar would be people who are looking into entering the UI UX field, which would be students, career shifters, and also, I've met some of the people who are trying hard to understand what UI UX is about so they can find a fit candidate for that position. So some of the goals for this um, webinar would be to give you a brief discussion of UI UX, so terminologies, show UI UX elements and processes, different design principles, um, the common things that usually happens in the workplace, so what is being submitted, and um, some of the things that UI UX designers face whenever they're in a workplace, and the tools they use for UI UX and some design guidelines. So to start this, um, so what is UI and UX? So definitely um, UI is not really UX. So let's, if you look at the screen, I have here two samples of ketchup bottles. So the first thing we would look at is this bottle right here. So it is labeled as UI. So the question is, bakit UI yung nakalabel dito and UX yung nakalabel dito? So pareho silang ketchup bottle, but they serve um, different types of a purpose. So this is called UI because it focuses more on the design. Um, so it holds the content. The design of the bottle looks great. But the problem with that is, yung mga user na gumagamit ito is, they still have to, um, para kailangan lang taktakin yung bottom ng ketchup just to get it out, yung laman, which is yung ketchup. Now, this causes trouble for some users kasi they still have to exert some force dun sa bottom ng bottle para makuha nila yung content. So this one is labeled UX because people can use it very conveniently. Hindi na nila kailangan mag-exert ng force dun sa bottom ng bottle just to get the content out. They could just smoothly squeeze this container and then they would get the thing that they would want. So, in actual, what is UI? So UI focuses more on visuals and, it's guide, and it guides users through interfaces by interactive elements across platforms and devices. So UI focuses more on visual design. So ito yung mga nakikita natin like mga headers, yung mga images na ginagamit sa website. Um, it's mostly based on the color, ano yung font na ginamit, and the icons that is being used dun sa design. So we will discuss one by one kung ano ba yung mga nandito sa baba na to. So let's start first with components. So, um, to make this easier for you guys, um, if you can imagine it as a jigsaw puzzle, so or let's say you're trying to create a building, so you have the windows, you have the doors, and you have other components that would make up that building. So, parang ganun din yung website. Ano ba yung mostly nakikita natin sa website? So, meron siyang header, then you have the footer, and you have other stuff in there like images. So components are basically what comprises that design, whether it be website or mobile applications. So 
then we go to imagery. So imagery enhances UX and expresses a brand's visual language. It images tell stories and shows users how to perform actions. When it comes to imagery, it plays a huge impact on the design. Let's say it's a mobile application. If you use mobile applications, we have what we call these onboarding screens. So these onboarding screens tell you na okay, ito yung pwede mong magawa sa loob ng application, ito yung purpose ng application, and other features that the users will love. So usually, ito yung may get started, as you can see here. So you're informing the user how the application will perform its function. So images would help. So the images should relate to your text and the thing that you wanted to tell to your audience. So, um... So, ayun siya. So, dapat mag-fit silang dalawa. Kasi images play a huge part on communicating to your users. Or let's say when you're designing for a website, you have your content. So, your images should also support the content of your website. So, this is how important everything is. The next would be colors. So, of course, colors should be harmonious. It provides balance in life to your design. Colors indicate which elements are interactive. It makes text and icons legible. When appearing in colored backgrounds, it also represents your brand's color and reinforces style. So, um, usually, kapag um, nasa mobile app tayo, um, we see that colors indicate different things. Let's say the text color is gray. Parang bigla mong may isap na, okay, I can't press this because it is disabled. But when you see a text that has color in it, you will immediately think na, okay, this must be a link. It should link you somewhere or this must be serving a function. So usually, ganun siya. Um, also, let's say, um, black yung background mo and then yung color ng text or icon mo is white. So it makes it easier for people to, um, to see these things. Kumpara yung kapag hindi siya balance talaga, like kapag sobrang masakit sa mata, like your background is red, your text is um, yellow. So in order to um, have a good UI, you have to achieve a sense of balance dun sa use ng colors. Um, and also, colors um, represents your brand's color, which is, um, let's say you have a logo, you have to match the color of the overall application with your branding because it would represent that this application is connected to your brand. So um, so all of this is important. Or let's say you're creating um, you're creating a visual um, a visual design for your for your application. Let's say gumagawa ka ng images na customize for your application. So what you do is you have to balance the color, um, follow the color palette of your brand to achieve the design that you want. Okay. The next thing would be typography. So this is the art of arranging text to make it legible, readable, and appealing when displayed. So it shows hierarchy and brand presence. So you would see there that the bigger the text, the more emphasis na binibigay natin dun sa text na yun. So usually, you will see that, for example, titles. Um, if you come across an article title, they're usually in bold or medium, but supporting text should be in regular form. So this is, these are some of the things na parang sobrang nitty-gritty details na inaano natin sa UI design. So all of that plays a part. So your combination of images, your combination of colors, your combination of the components that you use in your design, combination of typography that you use in your design is very crucial to your UI design. So we must always make sure na laging malinis yung design natin and laging um, maintain natin yung balance dun sa design natin. Kasi if we use good fonts, or good typography, but we don't use the right colors for them to make it legible, so it doesn't make any sense. Kahit gaano pa kaganda yung font na pinili nyo. Or let's say you have very beautiful imagery, but it doesn't fit the color palette of your um, application or your web or your website, then 
wouldn't make any sense either kasi hindi rin siya magmamatch. So, it's just a matter of um, magkatry ka na magkatry until you find the thing that you think would suit it. And lastly, we have icons. So, icons comes in three types. So, we have product icons, system icons, and animated icons. So, for product icons, it represents your brand's product. Let's say, si Google. So, si Google, it has its main logo, which is yung Google. But under Google, it has different products like Gmail. It has like Google Slides. So, yung mga icon na yun is what we call the product icons. Yung icon nila Gmail and icon nila Google Slides. Um, system icons would be representing actions, files, directories, and devices. So, ito yung mga usually nakikita nyo like this one. This one is for home. This one is for settings. This one is for location. So, yan yung system icons. Animation icons are just like system icons except that they're moving and they're mimicking yung, um, yung same na movement. Let's say I have a lock. So, ano bang ginagawa natin sa lock? Like, there's this... Um, there's um meron dito sa taas and then parang kinakabit natin siyang ganyan so um the action of the lock would um would be effective dun sa animation on so pinapakita niya kung paano ba talaga nagle-lock in real life so so ayun so the principles of design so these are the five basic principles of design so we have first the alignment um, this is to ensure that the art, that the items are in line with each other. So, um, in basic term, in lang yung pagkakapantay nila. So, kapag pantay ang, ang, ang design mo, let's say you have two buttons here, um, hindi naman pwede na isa yung nakababa. So, to achieve a sense of balance, you have to, to go with alignment. Next would be repetition. So let's say you're making a lot of pages for the website or you're making a lot of screens for a mobile application. So dito na, din na natin ipapasok yung consistency. So when you make pages or screens, you have to be very consistent with the font that you use, the color that you use, kasi kung iba-iba siya, ma, para madadivert siya sa branding ng application mo. So, yun, like I said, colors, typefaces, and textures can be repeating. So, these are very common principles na kailangan nating sundin. Next would be contrast. So, si contrast enables you to highlight key elements within your design. So, hindi lang siya nag-work sa colors. Like, let's say, um, mas gusto mo i-highlight yung article title, kaya mo siya binold. Um, and lesser highlight dun sa text kasi... The way it works is gusto nating i-capture yung attention ng user dun sa title. Kasi yun yung, mag, yun yung mag ingganya sa kanila na, oh, I must read this article. Tapos, um, also like I said kanina, like yung sa text, parang naka-gray lang siya, di ba? Kasi naka-disable. But if you really want to highlight an action, let's say, um, then you put color on that. Um, on that text to show everyone na, hey, this is something that you tap or this is something that you click, this is a link or this is an action button. Next would be proximity. So proximity is grouping similar things together and creates relationship between these elements. So proximity in a sense is kapag nakikita mo na related yung actions, let's say you have two buttons. Let's say um, create and edit. So sila is parang magka-group silang dalawa kasi um, parang related naman yung actions nila to each other. So, parang yung pro dito natin ipapasok na kung tingin mong related sila sa isa't isa, then group them. If, if you think it performs a different action than the other than the other ones, then un um, ihiwalay mo siya dun sa group na yun. Um, next would be balance. So, Balance provides stability and structure to a design. It's distributing elements evenly in your design. So when you say balance, hindi naman yung sinasabi na dito sa left side, ano siya, um, same content as the right side. What balance just means is evenly distributed siya sa page mo. Like you have an image here, proper yung text mo here, then you have a button here. Um, 
is this a sense na dapat malinis yung design mo, not too much white space, tapos um, readable yung content. Kasi most people make mistakes. They overly put a lot of text. So parang um, nagkakaroon na ng sobrang daming text dun sa website. So parang sumasakit na yung ulo ng mga tao. So always keep in mind that um, if you're placing components or designs in your um, website or mobile application, see to it that you reduce the white space, but at the same time, keeping things very clean. And um, dapat hindi sumakit yung mata ng mga users, uh, mga users ng application nyo or yung website nyo. So, next would be, what is UX? So, UX enhances customer satisfaction by improving usability and ease of use provided in the interaction between users and the product. So like I said kanina, UI is not UX. You can have a very great design with a very poor user experience. So parang although may maganda kang design, it would not be important. Parang wala din kasi pangit yung UX mo. So what we really wanted was something that would be good for the users visually and something that would enable them to navigate through your application or your website easily without any problem. Let's say si Facebook. When Facebook came out, hindi naman tayo tinuruan mag-Facebook or pagka nag-release sila ng bagong features, hindi naman nila tayo tinuturuan. That is because maganda yung UX niya. So parang simple lang na kahit yung mga non-techy people, they would be using it with no problem. So that is a good UX. So first would be content, context, and then audience. So content obviously is what is in your application or your website. The context would be is how it would relate to your audience. And the audience would be the users who will be using your app or your website. So we have here our UX elements. So under strategy, we have the business requirements, user needs, and goals. So this is this is a phase where um, the UI UX designer gathers the business requirements and the user needs dun sa mga clients and um, the goals na gusto ng client in order to use the system. And of course, the goal ng UI UX designer to simplify yung process and make it easier for these clients. So under nung scope would be functionality, usefulness, and requirements. So under the scope would be, um, so functionality focuses more on how it would function. So let's say you have a very complicated uh, manual process. So if you want to automate it, the UI UX designer will simplify this process na related pa rin sa business requirements nila and at the same time mas madadalian yung user na gamitin yon useful and usefulness as well is uh, making sure that you use all the resources given to you in order for you to achieve your goal the next would be structure which con which is comprised of information architecture content and defining contents so with this structure you start to ask yourself what are the contents that needs to be placed on this application or a website? So obviously, it would depend on the user kung ano ba yung kailangan nilang makita, what is very useful for your clients or the business. Next would be, how would you um, arrange this information na kailangan makita dun sa website or sa application? So dito na pumapasok yung how do you arrange yung text, how do you arrange the other contents such as the visuals and so on. Ano ba yung talaga nilang dapat makita? Parang iha-highlight mo siya. Let's say you have a dashboard, right? So, dun sa dashboard na yun, pinapakita mo lahat ng mga important data nung kailangan makita ng client. So, ano ba yung top priority nila makita na crucial for the business operation? So, something like that. So, this is where the structure comes in. Next would be skeleton, which is the wireframe and interaction patterns. So this is where you lay out the bones or the skeleton of your um, design. And then the surface would be user interface, which is you name mga kula, you name mga images. So ano na siya? So high fidelity na siya nung, nung low fi na wireframe. So 
what are the um, user research deliverables? So um, first would be the persona. So si persona, it describes what the user is, ano yung mga motivation niya, frustration niya, and skills. So this is a part where you are studying who your users are in order for you to empathize with them. So parang malalaman mo na, ah, okay, ito pala siya. Um, this is what they do and this is what they find hard to do. Next would be storyboards. So this storyboard is like, it shows you a process in a, it's like a comic strip way. So parang nakadrawing siya na, ito yung ginagawang action ni user in order for him to achieve a goal or to finish an action. So dito pa lang makikita na nung makikita na nung UI UX designer na this is what slows him down, this is what confuses him in doing the task kaya siya nagtatagal. So merong ganung mga factor na nakikita sa mga storyboard. The next would be the customer journey map. So this shows the steps the users take to meet a specific goal. So si storyboard and customer journey map minsan nalilito yung mga tao sa kanila kasi Pareho silang nagpapakita ng steps to meet a specific goal. Si storyboard kasi, it's more of like a comic strip style. Si customer journey map, it's more of um, a descriptive siya na ito yung nararamdaman ng user pag ginagawa niya yung action. Parang nafa-frustrate ba siya? Nagagalit ba siya? Um, nahihirapan ba siya? So, dito na, so sa customer journey map, um, this is where things get very, very detailed para makita nila kung ano talaga yung nagiging problema sa process. And the UI UX designer will um, try to suggest an improvement dun sa process para pagka dinasign na is papadali na yung um, execution ng process na yun. So ideation deliverables, this is your user flow. So ito mukha siyang flow chart. So um, kapag gumagawa ng action ang user, parang ito yung nakikita nila na actions in flowchart form kung ano yung ginagawa ng user in order to um, in order to meet the goal or complete an action. So um, dito mo makikita kung ano ba yung steps na ginagawa niya tsaka yung efficiency ng process na ina-undertake niya in order to just finish a single action or multiple actions. The next would be prototyping deliverables. So um, first is the site map. So of course, site map is like um, is like a hierarchy tree. So, dito natin pinapakita yung mga main pages and the sub pages, um, or the screens or the sub or or the uh, minor screens. So um, dito natin nakikita kung let's say I have a home page. San ba ako pwedeng direct ng home page? If I have a, a page. Um, saan ba ako pwedeng i-link nung page na to? So, dito natin nakikita yan sa sitemap. So, yung transition from one screen to another, this is where we see it. The next would be the wireframe. So, wireframes are hand-drawn. So, pwede siyang um, sa papel or pwede mo siyang i-gawin ano sa, sa computer. So, it is a skeleton layout which is black and white. And it will show how content will be laid out on a screen. So, bago ginagawa yung mga colors and everything, so designers would make the skeleton first. And after the skeleton, pag na-finalize na, they will move to you, to getting into the high-fidelity wireframe. So, next would be the mock-ups. So, eto na yung may mga color. Yung kapag natapos mo na yung wireframe mo, yung skeleton, you will add the color and life to your designs. So this, take note that this is static. So hindi pa siya interactive. It's just plain design pa lang. Now, what you would want would be the interactive prototype. So prototypes are like wireframes, except that instead of static designs, so pwede silang maklik, pwede silang ipress. And from this, hindi siya coded. So design pa lang siya. But the users will get to have a feel of what, of how your app works or how your app looks. So parang minimimik niya yung coded na na application or website. So from there, pwede ka mag-test eh, na okay, dito nahihirapan yung users or um, the users find it good na they can experience these things in the application. So 
This is a wireframe in a mock-up. That's an example. So, um, so ito yung wireframe na hand-drawn. Ito yung wireframe na ginawa sa computer. Now, kapag na-finalize mo na siya, ito na yung tinatawag natin na mock-up. So, like I said, mock-up looks like the prototype. So, in prototype, ganito yung itsura niya except that you can tap the buttons and then may action na lalabas. So, like I said, it mimics the working application. Next would be evaluation deliverables. So, with evaluation deliverables, we have what we call the usability report. So, you run some tests with the real users. So, what you do is you will provide them um, a set of list of tasks na kailangan nila makomplete dun sa prototype. Like, let's say, okay, I'm testing Facebook. I want you to create a post. I want you to like a post or I want you to share a post. So, something na ganun. And then, from there, you, you will be able to measure yung um, errors nila. Dali, nadalian ba sila sa ginagawa nila? From here, you can also measure alin ba yung features na mostly ginagamit ng mga users? And how long does it take for them to complete a task? Some people would go very, very um, detailed. Like, nag install pa sila ng mga camera to see kung saang particular content ba nagfo-focus ang mga users. So, some people can go as deep as that. Also, we have what we call A-B testing, which is um, two different applications na may different layouts and guidelines. So, you will be able to tell which design works best for your users kung saan sila masadadalian. So, from there, we can conclude na okay, okay pala itong design na to. Um, or may, may, may problema sa design, hindi masyado na notice ng user yung function kasi hindi maganda yung pagkakalagay or hindi maganda yung pagkakadesign niya, hindi masyadong obvious, and all sorts of things. So from there, you can evaluate kung maganda ba yung UX ng application mo or not. Okay, let's now move to tools. So maraming tools na pwedeng gamitin for UI UX design. Um, let's take, for example, si Balsamic. So, Balsamic is um, it's a wireframing tool that you can use. Um, dito kay Balsamic, pwede ka rin gumawa ng prototype version ng wireframe. So, parang ganto siya, pero pinapakita mo na yung screen flow niya, kung, kung ano yung pwedeng mangyari pag pinindot ko to, and o ano ba yung transition niya from screen to screen. Um, Next would be SketchUp. So SketchUp is for Mac users. Um, the good thing about Sketch application is that um, you can group together things to make it easy. Like let's say you have multi, you have three three mobile screens. Tapos you want to use the same header for for all three screens. So pwede mong reuse yung header na yon. So parang hindi mo na siya individually ipepaste. Tapos, um, let's say, gusto kong, nagbago yung isip ko, gusto kong baguhin yung, yung header na gawing green. So, instead of individually editing each header, when you edit the main header, then everything in that screen, yung header na yun, it turns green. So, hindi mo na siya iisa-isahin. Kasi I remember back then, when I first started designing, as in, I, have, I had to individually change every screen's color ng header na nagbabago ako ng header or buttons. So, all you have to do is to edit that main component over there, change that color, and lahat ng, ng screens na nilagay mo ng header or ng button na yun, mababago na yung kulay niya. So, it is very good kasi um, it makes you work efficiently. So, I think UX Pin also has that feature. Next would be Figma. So, Figma is... Um, so, online siya, um, and it's free. So, I currently use this too, but I I've also used Sketch. Sketch is really good. I've also used Balsamic. Um, Figma is good kasi yun nga, free siya. So, if you want to start experimenting, you might as well use this. Next would be Adobe XD. Um, it is very good, and um, I can say na medyo katulad siya ng Sketch. But um, 
you can use transitions on this like let's say you want to achieve like a parallax transition so you can do it here in adobe xd all you have to do is just to have to watch a couple of tutorials then say youtube and then you can get it right with the transitions next would be envision so with envision um i haven't really used this too much so i can provide any recommendation or comment on this next would be ux pin so i've used ux pin um parang may katulad din siya ni sketch although it is more easier to work in sketch than ux pin so si ux pin sa web din siya just in mind so just in mind is also a good prototyping tool so um all you have to do is just download the libraries like if you have material um android library or ios library then you get to choose devices like what are you designing for are you designing for iphone se are you designing for an ipad or are you designing for an android so you get to have those choices and um usually kasi ang ginagawa nila is you'll design sa sketch tapos maga parang ini import mo yung sketch file dun sa prototyping tool mo so that's what usually happens hindi sila gumagawa ng design dun sa prototyping tool mismo so they make it they make a wireframe they design the visuals dun sa sketch app and then ini import nila dun sa gusto nilang prototyping tool the next one would be principle for mac so ito sa mac lang to ito pala guys in just in mind it's in um it's in the mac as well and as well as windows okay si principle naman this is for mac so it is very good when it comes to transition as in sobrang smooth nung mga animation and transitions niya um although you know you just have to watch a couple of videos din sa youtube in order to get things right pero maganda siya sa transitions i would really recommend this one too now let's go here in framer x so see si framer x um the good thing about here is if you have projects in like they say developers are using react then framer x would definitely be the one to use so um sa dito sa mga tools na to um let's say dito kay figma um nakikita natin yung css code niya so hindi na kailangan mag provide ng sa style guide ng let's say this is the color that i've used ganun kasi pagka clinic naman nung developer yung sa prototype mo na okay this is the color of the header makikita na agad nila yon or if you used images they can directly download it from there they will see kung ano yung font na ginamit mo kung anong size yung ginamit mo what color did you use for them so parang it reduces the um it reduces the efforts as well so parang sobrang efficient na siya so dun sa css code na nila makikita yon and um if you directly edit the um the css code automatically magre-reflect na rin siya sa design like let's say you have a button na naka box but then you decided to change your mind you said i want this to be a round button so definitely you'll be putting the radius diba you'll be setting the radius so if you set the radius of that button dun sa mismong css code na yon it will be effective dun sa design mo magiging round siya so that's one of the good things um when i i remember when i was working back then i had to make a design but i still have to have a supporting document um i'm not saying na unnecessary pa rin yung supporting document of course we have to be the document um as much as we could but um would in terms of this like alam niyo yung parang sobrang napapadali na yung yung work ng developer kasi instead of running through all these documents then they would just simply see yung colors kung anong font so hindi na sila sobrang magbabasa they will just see it on the css code itself okay then the last things would be azure um then maze so maze is like um you test your um your application's usability here so let's say si maze parang kasabihin sa mga user na create a post like let's say that's one of the features of your application so maze will track per action kung ano ba yung 
gusto mong ipagawa sa user? How long did it take for them to do it? And did you have struggles doing that action? So, like I said, this is for usability. So, maze, user testing, and optimizely are all for for usability testing. Siya. So, you get to upload your application. Then you have like real time users who are using these applications, and then you send out a link to people in order for them to try it. Also, so. Ayon, dun ka makagather ng feedback from different people. So not just not just in the Philippines, but it also depends on your selected target places like US or Australia or um or whatever um location you want. Kung saan mo gusto i-deploy yung application mo. Um so Snatcher. So si Snatcher, I find this tool very handy kasi let's say I'm on a website. So parang ito siya eh. So on this website, you see, I have captured the background colors. Parang ano ba yung mga color na nandito sa website? So automatically you can see, and then you will see here. Oh, there's a typography, so you will know which font ba yung ginamit, anong style, anong size, anong line height, anong color. So it will be easier for some designers. If you're working for a project, na um, let's say you're focusing on the brand, right? Tapos ang ginagawa mo is you have to stick to the branding, like the colors, the font, and everything. So what you would want to do is you go to that, to the website of that um, product or client. Tapos use the snatcher, and then you will get the colors. Nung ano instead of using like color picker or something, you print screen kapad and color picker on the Photoshop. So this is what what you can do. Tapos um, you can also see there yung mga font. So Pwede mo siyang i-download para makuha mo yung font for that specific um, for that specific brand. Ngayon, what you can also do is, you can look like, you can also look at Google Fonts. Um, so usually, let's say na hindi, wala kang makuha na na source ng mga font. What you can do is, you can browse here and find something na Kamukha nung font na yun. So, parang, ano, you, so you're, you're just kind of mimicking it, but it looks like it. Because sometimes, um, sometimes we don't have enough resources dun sa font na yun. Sometimes we have to pay, and some people don't want to pay for it. So, so yun. Um, next would be design guidelines. So, um, this will be the last topic for today. So, um, design guidelines are the designs that we are following in order to achieve um, a very good design and UX dun sa applications natin. So, one of the things that I work extensively with is Google Material Design. So, that, that is for, for Android. And then, iOS Human Interface Guidelines. And you have Fluent Design for Microsoft and then Ant Design. So there are there are some design libraries that designers are looking into. Kasi, let's say um, you're working on a React project. So parang dun sa React, may mga libraries kasi dun. Um, so if the designers use a specific design library, it would be easier for the uh, developers to pull that library at yun yung gagamitin nila na design library dun sa, ano, dun sa application or dun sa website. So if you can see here, you have Google Material Design. So it gives you guides like, let's say, like let's say you have here your colors. So parang they give you an idea of, of a color. One second. So ayan siya. So if you want to... um. So if you want to um, have colors, you can use this. So ito yung colors na ginagamit sa material design ni Google, which is mainly used for Android products. So ayan siya. You can find here different shades, um, different hex codes. So yun yung mga pwede mong gamitin. Um, they also have guides of applying color to UI. Like this one. So as you can see, this one is darker. This one is a little bit more vibrant. You can see how the font and the icons are white para maging legible sila. So, this is how they tell you um, 
ganito mag-combine ng colors, what is good and what's not. Then, you also have here, um, you also have here the, um, the components. So, parang ano yung mga rules nila for the components. Let's say, you want an up bar or let's say you want a button. So, dito pinapakita yung mga rules ng buttons like what to do with it and what not to do with it. Like, let's say, bawal tong tatlo. Um, kailangan magmatch sila parang exercise with caution. Kung ano ba yung mga um, kung ano ba yung uh, anatomy ng button, like let's say you have one icon here, then you have a circle in here, and then you have a drop shadow, kung paano siya ginagamit. And then also the rules for it, like it should be like this, hindi mo pwedeng lagyan ng, uh, hindi mo siya pwedeng lagyan ng badges, like yung mga bilang. So, different uh, components, different rules and usage, and how to, um, how to do these components. So, um, same with iOS human interface guidelines. So, um, this is for iOS naman. So, um, if you are joining the classroom, so I will put everything there, including yung link sa slides, um, link sa material, material design and material or whatever you want na gusto kong, na gusto nyong i-ano ko, na ilagay ko, that would be helpful for you guys. Um, So, so, parang katulad sa, an, sa material design, parang ito siya. So, pinapakita din niya kung ano yung mga dapat gawin at hindi pwede dapat gawin dito sa mga components sa um, iOS Human Interface Guidelines. So, um, lahat, naman ng, lahat naman ng design guidelines is meron silang guide or how to's dun sa mga components tsaka sa ano nila sa mga styles nila kasi this does not necessarily end in just components like let's say si Google material design it's more focused on communicating with um with your user so parang um medyo playful yung design niya tapos it mostly relies on um images then so parang buhay but it's mostly um, focused on flat design so we're in ios or human interface guidelines kung makikita yan, parang they're, they're focused on medyo gradient yung style nila so parang ganun so um these design guidelines are also important to follow in order to achieve the um the ui ux that you want um depending on which platform you're designing so um, so, along with this um, knowledge na pinikay ko sa inyo, like, about warframing, um, may mga elements of UI and UX, the processes that you undertake when you're in the field, and then design guidelines and the tools. If you combine all of this, then definitely you are on the right track to become a UI UX designer. Um, also, to one very good asset would be if a UI UX designer would have a working background or just some kind of a knowledge knowledge background of HTML and CSS. So that would be good as well. Um, ang naranasan ko sa career ko is since I was a UI UX designer and then nag transition ako dun sa um, front end development. Um, since I had an idea of what UI UX is like, it's easy to implement it na dun sa design. Magaparang Mostly kasi na nangyayari, you have to give out the design to the front-end developers. So, if you have an idea of what a good design, of what a good UX, UI UX is for, an, for a product, then you will do good. Then, parang advantage mo na yun na mas mapapabilis yung trabaho. Kasi may idea ka na. Alright. So, um... If you have any questions, you can um, put it on the live comments and or you can, what you can do is you can put it dun sa classroom natin.
you can um, message me over there and i will also be uploading the materials then all right so that is our topic for today and thank you for attending this seminar so if you ever need anything just ping me on that classroom and then i'll, I'll always get back to you guys um if you have any in-depth questions of course um i can also give you my email then so you can talk to me about them and i will be happy to i, I will be happy to um guide you through guys through this so for those of you guys who are in, really interested in the ui ux field all right um so all right have a good evening guys Okay, um, I have here a question. So, so Richard Balauro, you said, madami na bang job opportunities sa Pinas ng UX? Um, yes, meron na tayong opportunities sa Pinas ng UX. Um, so, most companies are looking into this kasi usually nang nanonotice ko is the companies are just diving deep into development. So, parang nalilive out na nila yung UI UX design. So, this compromises the... Um, yung sa products ng company so what you what they want to do is they want to improve the um the UI UX of their products kasi parang medyo mahirap din doon pagka na develop na yung product nila and um parang din na nila maiatras eh, ba so kailangan they have to redo everything based doon sa standard ng UI UX na and ano nila so that's why some of the companies what they do is they do a uh, reversioning so may napasukan ako isang company before na as in from scratch nila ini ba as in sobrang totally ibang iba dun sa original nila na product as in remake nila just to follow that UI UX na ano na tingin nung mga designers is very suitable na magagamit efficiently ng mga clients nila so if you have more questions um i can answer them Also, thank you sa mga umatend ng seminar today. Um, like I said, I would I will always be here to help you guys out. So, um, if you have questions, you can um, we can also have it in sa Google Classroom, and um, I can help you guys out also if you have um, any questions with regarding with tools and stuff like that. So, long problem about that. All right, guys, see you na lang dun sa my Google Classroom. Thank you.